Spiritual warfare is absolutely a part of the Christian walk, and we're inevitably going to run into spiritual attacks as long as we're following Jesus, as long as we're doing what God has called us to do, when we're walking that straight and narrow, when we're pursuing a life of righteousness and holiness in the Lord, we're going to run into spiritual attacks. You don't have to go looking for the demonic. You don't have to go looking for these things. They will come to your doorstep as long as you are just walking out and being obedient to do what Christ has asked you to do. I do believe in deliverance ministry. I will say that. Matthew chapter 10, Jesus gave the disciples when he sent them out authority to cast out demons. So I do believe this is a role of the church. I believe this is a role of the body of Christ. However, I do believe that there's a lot of people on the internet and on YouTube teaching and preaching things that are not biblical. It's causing a lot of confusion. It's causing a lot of paranoia. It's causing a lot of fear in believers and people who aren't as familiar with the Word of God, um, and they are paranoid about the fact that they could have a demon. What is a demon? Is this a demon? Is that a demon? They're being told all these different ways to remedy it, um, giving money, going to this particular person, all of this stuff that is not in the Bible. So today I want to address what the Bible says about spiritual warfare. You've probably heard some of this before, but I want to read you a few passages of scripture and tell you that Jesus is the answer to all of this. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is our defender. He is the one who keeps us safe and our eyes as Christians need to be focused on Jesus and not demons. Let's start in 2 Corinthians 10. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, We're not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So this tells us we are in a fight against demonic powers. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So there we see that a lot of these battles that happen, happen in the mind, and we have to take those thoughts captive captive according to what the Word of God says. And we're going to come back to that later. And this next passage is what most of us know and most of us recite when it comes to spiritual warfare, which is Ephesians chapter 6, where he says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So therefore, we take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. So Paul is telling us here in order to come against these demonic powers that we are fighting, we're not fighting against people, but we're fighting against demonic powers, spiritual beings that we are up against. So we got to look past the person and look at the spirit. First John 4 tells us to test the spirit. So we're testing, we're using that spiritual discernment that the Holy Spirit gives us. And the way to fight this is to stand in the armor of God. Romans chapter 13 also tells us this. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So we've got the armor of God and we've got the armor of light. And then further down, it says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So we're being told here by Paul that we put on the armor of light, we put on the armor of God, and that we put on Jesus Christ. Well, I want to propose to you here that all of these things in the armor of God point us back to the person of Jesus Christ. Let's read on. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith through which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication or petition to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making petition or supplication for all the saints. But he gives us these different tools that we pick up and we equip ourselves with starting 
starting with the belt of truth. Well, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And then the next thing he says is having put on that breastplate of righteousness. Well, the book of Revelation 19 tells us the one sitting on it is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Second Corinthians 5.21, he says, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Psalm 89.14 says, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne, steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Do you see what I'm saying here? Everything points back to Jesus. Let's keep going. As for the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The book of Isaiah 9, 6 says, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We know Jesus is the Prince of Peace peace. Moving on, he says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. The book of Hebrews 11, 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Second Corinthians 10, 5 says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete, what does that mean? That means when something comes and raises itself, we take those thoughts captive by the shield of faith. We say, no, I'm not going to believe what you're telling me, enemy. I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to uh, fold to this crippling anxiety. I'm not going to fold to this depression. I'm not going to listen to these thoughts that come against what the word of God says. You're telling me everything I'm not, but I'm going to look to what the Bible tells me I am. I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. That is is what the shield of faith does. So when those fiery darts are thrown your way, you're holding it up and saying, I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus. I'm putting on you, Jesus. I'm resting in that armor of light. I'm making no provision for my flesh. Is that making sense? Moving on, it says, he tells us to take up the helmet of salvation. Look at Revelation 19.1. It says, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Romans 10.9 says, because if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus is our salvation. And lastly, it says that we pick up and fight back with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Revelation 19, 13 says he is clothed in a robe dipped in blood and the name by which he is called is the word of God. We know John 1, 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In John 1 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Do you understand that Jesus is the word of God? We fight back with Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to propose that this is how we put on the armor of God, how we put on Christ, how we put on that armor of light as we rest in what the word of God says we believe that Jesus is who he says he is. We believe that he is the first and the last. Get our eyes off of our issues. Get our eyes off of what could be demonic. That is not the answer to dealing with spiritual attack. The answer to dealing with spiritual attack is getting your eyes on Jesus, quoting scripture, holding up that shield of faith, saying, I'm not going to believe that devil. I'm not going to go down that road. I'm not going to believe that lie. You know, Satan is the great deceiver. He's the accuser of the brethren. He wants to tell you everything you're not. He is the one who sows confusion. God is a God of clarity. We have to take every thought captive according to what the word of God says. And that's what we stand on. That is the shield of faith. That is fighting back with the word of God. We rest in that peace of God. Jesus is our Prince of Peace. Do you understand that everything points us back to Jesus? He is our salvation. He's the author 
and the finisher of our faith. Jesus already died. He already went to the cross. He already conquered death, hell, and the grave. And we don't need men. We don't need other people to invent these different mystical practices and tell us everything that we need to do to get rid of the demons in our life. If you would just focus on Jesus, I'm not saying the demonic forces are not real. They are very real and we need to be aware of them. And yes, we need to live a life of righteousness and holiness. But when these things come against us, we have to know to start quoting scripture. We have to know to start telling ourselves we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. And that word sound mind translates to self-control of our mind. The Lord has given us through the power of the Holy Spirit, the ability to walk in the spirit. We have to choose to walk in the spirit and walk by faith. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not always easy. Sometimes what we're feeling is very real. We feel physical manifestations of these demonic attacks tax, but that doesn't mean Jesus isn't greater. He's already come and paid the price that we couldn't pay. He died the death that we could not die. And guys, he rose again on the third day so that we can know him, so that those who come to know Jesus and rest in him, abide in him, John chapter 15, we can have that protection and we are safe in him. Psalms 91, we rest in him. We can rest in the Lord. Psalms 23, he lays us down in green pastures and leads us beside the still waters. He restores my soul or that also means he brings us to repentance we come into that place of repentance we give no room to the enemy when we put on Christ we make no provision for the flesh we make no provision for it and we say nope I'm refusing that thought I'm putting that out and I'm believing and holding fast to what the Word of God says and ladies and gentlemen this is the way and the only way that we combat spiritual attacks in our life. If anybody out there is preaching or teaching a different gospel or telling you a different thing, I encourage you to go to the Word of God. Go to what the Bible says. Ask for book, chapter, and verse. It's very important we don't make stuff up. It's very important that we're not leading people to us, that we're not leading people to a channel, to a church, to a minister that only has the answers on how to get free from demons. The Bible gives us everything that we need to know. There is no more and there is no less, and it is the final authority and the final word of God. It is Jesus. He is the word of God, and he is always the answer. Jesus is the answer. If this video was helpful to you, then I would ask that you would hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button, the like button, so that more people can see this important message. I hope this blesses you and encourages you and equips you to go to the word of God anytime you're facing those spiritual attacks of the enemy. Thank you so much for watching and be blessed and I'll see you in the next one.